Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Swipe Up, the 124th episode of the show where I share some of my favorite posts from Instagram. Let's get it started, shall we? With the first one that I've been noticing in the news. Uh, something very annoying. Well, this particular post, of course, is, uh, uh, for those that don't know, Amazon has been stealing the tips from their drivers. Uh, stealing the tips is, uh, a term that none of the news organizations are using that Amazon stealing from their drivers. Uh, they use all of these different terms like withholding, uh, help to subsidize, uh, redirected, uh, just all these kind of soft terms f- instead of just outright saying what Amazon actually did, which is steal from their employees. Uh, tips are supposed to go, 100% of your tips are supposed to go to the driver. Uh, and uh, Amazon wasn't doing that. Amazon was skimming, uh, doing the thing that would cause... If this, if it were a relationship in the mob, uh, Amazon would be taken out in a. There'd be, <laughs> there would be plastic uh, spread ac- across the floor of a motel room, and the guy that Amazon was there to meet isn't showing up. But right behind him is a nice uh, loaded gun, uh, spewing bullets into their brain. Uh, but yeah, just kind of a crazy thing. Another thing that n- news organizations are doing that make makes me angry is when they refer to the terrorist act that happened at the Capitol on the 6th of January. Uh, they don't call it terrorism. They call it violent mobs. They call it they, they use all of these other very they decorate the reality in these fluffy, flowery terms. Instead of just coming out and saying, like, the Kyle Rettenhouse kid, he ended the lives of multiple people. Also known as murder. He murdered multiple people. His mom drove him and the murder weapon to the location where the murders took place. They were pre, they were planned. He went intending on eliminating human life. Murder. Like they're not using the terms like the cops that killed George Floyd. They're not using the terms murder. They're they're using you know caught uh, excessive force or whatever. It's just ridiculous, and I've noticed it as well. And uh, this post from Dave Anthony uh, highlights exactly the same thing that I've been seeing with all of the things that have been going on. These news organizations, you would think, you would think. These news organizations, considering all they care about are clicks, clickbait, uh, that they would actually use the the proper terms. Maybe maybe a little harsh for some people to to listen to or to read, to read a a murder or uh, that Amazon is stealing from their employees. But, uh, you know, it's it's ridiculous. But, you know, we're living in ridiculous times. So let's move on now to another ridiculous thing that's, it, it, you know, it's similar to the the rot, the terrorists that tried to overthrow the government led by the former president, Donald Trump. Uh, the anti-maskers really shooting themselves in the foot, uh, committing these crimes. It's, it's very hilarious that these people... Uh, don't believe in the coronavirus. They're very, they're just fragile little snowflakes that can't, they can't uh, wear a mask due to their inability to breathe normally as humans uh, because God or whatever. I don't, I don't really know their, their excuses for not wearing the mask other than stupidity. Uh, but it's also aided in them being caught uh, pretty easily as well because most people that commit crimes in general attempt to hide their identity with different things oh kind of like using a mask some things like obstructing your face maybe you know from the eyes down right you don't want anybody to see the bottom heart you know 
the bottom part of your face, uh, which they're so anti putting anything over their face that they're willing to commit crimes with their their just kind of identity piece out showing the the entire world who they are. Uh, so it was a guy out in Pasadena went to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, uh, anti masker. Uh, obviously, was uh, the establishment was trying to eject him, not wanting to serve him because he doesn't believe that a virus has swept the entire world and his human rights are being violated. Uh, just he crying at a. a chicken and waffle place uh so he got angry and uh took out a gun and uh i'm sure he's in jail now because he's an idiot he's an idiot and he should be in jail and uh definitely shouldn't uh be able to ha own a gun like if you if you don't believe in wearing a mask you shouldn't be allowed to own a firearm like i i don't know if we could ever make that correlation legally binding but it really, like, if you don't believe in science, then you shouldn't have the ability to eliminate human life with the uh, curling of a finger um, because you're weak and you're stupid and you're unsafe to hu humanity. Uh, but let's move on now to just one of my favorite artists. I love seeing these pieces. Uh, Brie, Sor I believe it's Sorel, uh, her last name. Uh, but she does these very layered if you look at her past post this one's an amazing kind of a a time lapse of a commission that she did uh for somebody they're all very uh scandalous very done in a tasteful manner but always like a nude woman there's uh and and using masking to kind of either have the image within the the letters or sometimes they like overlap it's just an amazing style, really kind of the the contrast between the hard lines of the the masking and the stenciling uh, mixed with the just kind of beautiful oil paintings of the naked form. Uh, just love it. Love it so much and uh, wanted to show this video because it's always interesting to when you see the final pieces that she she puts out. Uh, it's interesting to see kind of how they started and what they were before the masking comes off. Uh, like a lot of work that ends up getting thrown away. Uh, but it, it's a style that uh, I really enjoy. And uh, so that's this. That's why I'm sharing this one. Uh, let's move on now to a new podcast that I started uh, watching or, or listening to, actually. But they do have a video component as well. Uh, Sal Valcano and, uh, damn it, what's his name? Joe DeRosa, right? Joe DeRosa, yeah. Uh, they started a podcast uh, called Taste Buds where they argue uh, over food items. And this most recent episode was bacon versus sausage. Sal Valcano had bacon because he is a smart man. And Joe DeRosa took sausage because... He tends to, from what I've listened, I've listened to maybe five episodes, and it's a lot of arguing, a lot of yelling. They're best friends, two stand-up comedians out in New York. Uh, reminds me a lot of my old podcast I did with Keith Spurlock. Uh, just a lot of arguing over kind of mindless things, but this is something they do in their normal life, and they decided to turn it into a podcast. And uh, Joe DeRosa tends to pick... Uh, the more obscure thing to to try and defend in these arguments and it's hilarious how horrible he is at arguing i would say uh but it's a lot of fun to listen to them argue at the beginning of the episode they put up a poll and uh, at the end of the episode they they read the results of the poll to see what the people choose between the two now the people aren't watching their argument live i don't believe maybe they are maybe some of them are uh but it's kind of it's an interesting thing to have them argue over something and then an audience vote on it without hearing both sides of the argument. But uh, I lo I kind of love the show. It's a as far as two people yelling at each other, uh, yelling over food items and which is better is is a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a new podcast to watch or listen to, uh, check out Taste Buds with Sal Valcano from the Impractical Jokers. Uh, and Joe DeRosa from uh, 
uh, what's that what's it not breaking bad but the uh the the prequel series he's he's the veterinarian in that series um blanking on the name of the show whatever um but it's awesome let's leave with uh some chaos a pit bull wielding a sword a giant machete of sorts and the person kind of it seems like maybe they do this bit uh now and then and uh he's holding a skateboard to protect him from his leg getting cut off which i'm surprised didn't happen usually this was posted by the beast ufc uh derek lewis heavyweight fighter in the ufc posts usually post pretty gruesome stuff videos that don't end well for the subjects uh this one i kept waiting for his leg to get for blood to just start pooling up but it seems that he protected himself uh pretty good from this dog uh attacking him but uh yeah just a crazy video crazy video let's uh let's get out of here though let's do some shout outs and get out of here shout out to dave underscore anthony underscore shout out la times brie dot sorel uh shout out sal Volcano and shout out the beast ufc and most importantly shout out to you make sure you support our sponsor station house coffee give them a follow on instagram at station house coffee and head on over to their website stationhousecoffee.com to pick yourself up some small batch single origin premium coffee brewed in thetford center vermont and shipped directly to you help support small business and support the small businesses that support this show give them a follow on instagram station house coffee and go over to their website stationhousecoffee.com and order yourself some coffee today new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on igtv youtube and everywhere else podcasts are found Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor show merch over at inspired disorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out.